Well, hello there again, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Grab your cup of coffee and a seat because, as always, I'm Polly, and this is Polly's Power Hour. All right, so it's Wednesday, and as most of you will be watching this on Wednesday or Thursday, and tonight we're going to talk about scan tools, or scanners, or whatever you want to say. Now, all of my vehicles, from Kit, to the Caddy, to the Bitchin' Camaro, to Big Mama, they're all either carbureted, OBD-1, or their own type of uh, onboard, OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostic, by the way, uh, their own type of OBD. So Kit has a standalone ECU, so nothing. The Caddy has its own OBD system where I can actually go in and read all the codes off of my um, my uh, panels. And I'll show, I'll make a video about that because I'm sure people are gonna be interested in that. And then the Camaro has straight standard GM OBD-1. I can actually read all of the Camaro's codes with a paper clip. They make a special key for it that bridges the two pins of the port, but a paper clip will do it, right? So that just leaves the wifey's Mazda, which has OBD2. Now OBD2 started in 96 and it goes all the way to modern vehicles. Uh, I make, I say this because a majority of you are either owning one of these or you're getting started working as a mechanic. And this is going to be something to put in your toolbox that you're going to need down the road. So. What do I use? For the longest time, I had one of these. Now, you can get something like this at your local auto parts store, real quick and easy, All right? You plug it in, boop, it does its thing. There's a battery in it if you wanted to. There's a nine pin serial port on top for nothing because nobody has nine pin serial anymore. So it's not gonna do anything for you. I've gotten by with that for the longest time. Now, this, I think, for the person getting started, or that does this on the side for a hobby, or even owns an OBD2 car, and want to help your friends out, this right here is probably the best bang for the buck. And it's an Autel. Ah. So check this thing out. This is the Maxi TPMS TS608. I actually bought this from a friend of mine who he used this when he got started and it worked out pretty well. The thing I like about it is uh, it's Bluetooth, right? So it comes with charging cord, it comes with a data cord, uh, a couple other things here and there, this activator for TPMS sensors, and obviously the tablet and uh, what they call the VCI module. It's the Bluetooth module. Also, this has a little stand. Bing! Cool. So I say TPMS because a lot of you have a vehicle post-2005 when TPMS sensors started to become big. And it's important to reprogram them because if you take your tires and rotate them, well, now your pressures are all gonna be wrong, right? If you, if it thinks that this tire is that tire and that tire is that tire, it's gonna read that code, that uh, sensor, but it's gonna tell you the wrong tire, right? So if you take your front driver's side and put it on your uh, rear passenger side, right? It's gonna read that pressure, but it's gonna tell you it's that tire. Make sense? So it, it's gonna tell you the wrong tire is low or high, vice versa, right? So, yeah, we're going to do a quick, like, so I unboxed it, cool, uh, now I'm going to power it up, and we're going to talk about it. So what's neat about this thing is it is indeed an Android-based tablet. It does take a little bit to start up, which happens, right? 
Now this one is pretty old. Um, Zach bought it a couple years ago and I'm the second owner of it. Actually, I'm the second or third owner of it. But either way, it still works, right? Uh, to be comparative, a snap-on scanner, which is pretty, pretty fancy, is about $10,000. And it doesn't do TPMS sensors. You need a separate tool for that. So bang for the buck right here. Check this out. So it's your typical Android tablet, right? The date, time, battery, all that crap down here. You swipe to unlock, and it automatically defaults to this screen, which is nice. But you can do home, and it becomes a regular Android tablet. You got internet, uh, file explorer, a whole bunch of stuff, right? But you're dealing with the Maxi TMM, TPMS software. So you have your TPMS service and, or TPMS diagnostics and service, right? Toolkit, settings, update, which I have to update this thing. I'm not paying the money for it right now, though. This is TPMS Retrofit. The VCI Manager, which is this thing. And your Shop Manager. The Shop Manager is pretty cool. Um, I use it to keep track of... Uh, I mean, I'm not a business, but if you had a business, say like your own business or whatever, right? you do Customer Manager. I got uh, the wife... Uh, mother-in-law's car boss's truck i don't know oh this is my vehicles which i use to keep track of service and stuff but these are just vehicles that you use a lot right and then vehicle history by tpms diagnosis service whatever right so the last one i used was a 2012 gm buick which is my boss's daughter's car and it gives me all my faults here right cool so let's Take this. Oh, go back. <laughs> All right, so let's take this to the wife's car and put this thing into practice and see how it does. All right, so we plug this in. I put this remove before flight tag on here just because my biggest fear is that I'm going to lose this darn thing. And I've almost left it into a few cars. So the remove before flight tag helps, right? So key is on. All right, so we'll go to diagnostics now what's nice about this thing is i can do a vin number auto detect and it'll come up scan the van and automatic selection there's the vin select okay and it decodes it to tell me that this is a Now I'm doing this in real time. I'm not gonna speed this up just so you can get an idea of this isn't as fast as like a newer machine, but still does the same. So it's still in decoding the VIN information. There we go. So it's 2009, select 2009. So it's, that screen is different for each vehicle. It all depends on model years and stuff like that. So this is a Mazda 3, 2.3 liter, PATS equipped, automatic transmission, federal emissions, two wheel drive, and there's the VIN. So now I say yes, system data is loading. And what's nice about this is it's Bluetooth, so I can stand up, put it on top of the car, and do it this way if I wanted to. Or I could sit at the workbench or whatever. But the point is, I don't have to, I'm not tethered to the vehicle, which is nice. All right, so I'm going to do control unit scan, right? So if you do auto scan, it'll scan everything. All right, so here's all your stuff. You got your PCM, TCM, transmission control, auto, uh, analog brakes, restraint control module, instrument cluster, uh, suspension, I don't know your gem modules and your tpms sensors right so we'll do pcm which is your check engine light we'll do read codes all right now this is a ford based diagnostic system so you're going to have key on engine off key on engine running and continuous memory diagnostic codes we're going to do key on engine off because that's what we have all right yep prepare for read codes follow all the instructions And it's going to tell me if there are any codes in here. There shouldn't be. 
So this is going to be another long take because I'm going to show you how long this takes. It does take a little bit, but... No fault codes detected, All right? Cool. So let's talk about TPMS for a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna go select TPMS. Um, we're gonna do You would think these would be in alphabetical order. And I'm also looking through the camera and at the screen. All right, so Mazda. Yeah, I know, I gotta renew. Go back. So Mazda. This is a Mazda 3. Now this gives you your dates, 2004 to 2000, 2004 01 to 2004-12. 315 megahertz, right? So each of these is 315 megahertz, but we are at a 2009 of 12, or 2010 of 01, so we're in this 2009 bracket here. If you're unsure, look on the inside of your car, and it'll tell you in the door when the car was manufactured. So I'm gonna trigger the sensor, you put the little antenna, so it's got this little antenna here. You put that close to the valve stem, and it triggers the sensor, just like that. So I'm gonna go and do the rest of the car. All right, so I've triggered all the sensors, and as you can see, my PSI, it's in the green. I, I gotta put air in three of them. Um, but battery says okay, so that's good. Now, what's interesting is I just rotated the tires on this, and if you go to relearn, it gives me the relearn procedure, right? And drive it for however long, and this, that, and the other, right? Uh, so these are my IDs for the sensors. If I go to diagnostics, okay, it tells me there's a mismatch. It thinks the right front and the left rear sensors are switched. They're the wrong ones. And what's strange is when I go to programming, you can see that left front is good, right front is bad, um, right rear is good, left rear is bad. So it thinks that the right front is on the left rear and the left rear is on the right front, just like I said. What's strange is I did this a couple of days ago, so in theory they should have switched like these two, because I switched all four tires around. I'm curious as to why it hasn't. I tried to copy by activation, I tried to copy by OBD. Usually these work, but not in this case. So maybe the battery is not as good as I think it is in those sensors, and maybe that's what's going on. Either way, it, this should work, and it's not. So that tells me there's probably a problem with the sensor. If I go to diagnostics and I retry, do, 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 boom. Right? There's no DTCs. It says right here, no DTC, no diagnostic trouble code, which tells me it's a problem with these two sensors, which I'm not too incredibly worried about because here before too long, I'm taking this thing in and it's getting four new tires and it's going to be pricey because they're about 55 to 60 bucks a sensor, depending on which one you get. But we are getting all four brand new sensors for this as well. So plus... <sighs> If your car is like an 09 where it doesn't tell you exact pressures like on the dash, this doesn't. It just, when a tire goes low, it comes up with a light and you have to go outside the car and look and be like, hmm, which one's low? So, otherwise I'd press this issue. I take it to a tire shop and I get the sensors replaced. But since the sensors are gonna be getting replaced in a week or two anyway, I'm not gonna press this issue too much. So that's just a basic rundown of the TPMS system and how it works. And I hope you can see that this would be an advantageous thing for your average mechanic doing this at home or on the side or even the starting mechanic, right? Because now you've got everything all rolled into one. You can do diagnostics, you can do uh, TPMS, and you can do a bunch of other things too, which is really nice. I would advise going online and getting this. It's about $460 on Amazon right now. I'll actually post a link to it below in the description of this video, which is kind of cool. Oh, and check this out. Now, if I go, so, oh, service. All right, so if you go to service, 
This is where you go to like reset your oil lights, you do battery tests, brake bleeds for your ABS systems, uh, DPF after treatments, throttle, suspension. You can program keys to this, which is nice. Um, it's very, very handy. Um, injectors, suspension, throttle. Man, there's so much cool stuff you can do this, like keys. I could program keys if I wanted to, right? Now, if you go to Shop Manager, Vehicle History, go to Diagnosis, 2009 Mazda. That's the one I just did, right? It's Wifey's car. If I go to here, I can view a PDF, print a PDF, email, or delete the PDF. This is cool. You can actually email something to your customer, to yourself, whatever. And I'll show you what it looks like, because I'll view the PDF. Creating file. And allow. And this is what it looks like. So you have a Maxi TPMS, Alltel branding up in the corner, vehicle diagnostic report. 2009, Mazda. DTC and down here is where it would give you all your codes and everything else and it's nice because if you put um, Like the mileage and everything in here. It'll come up. It'll populate this and It's a very professional looking Report right kind of like what you get from your local auto parts store for their diagnostic codes and This is kind of cool. So actually let me show you one that I did a while back So this is one I did for a 2003 Expedition at the shop. Um, so as you can see, it gives it the basic information. I didn't put anything else in because it doesn't really matter. Uh, what's important is here, where it gives you your PCM, powertrain control module, all your codes, right? So it gives you what system is faulty, how many codes are in it, and then when you scroll down further, it gives you the DTCs, and it tells you exactly what's wrong with it, which is very very valuable especially as a technician and when you're telling the customer what's wrong with their car you can be like here you go this is it here's a printout bada bing bada bang bada boom so it's just one of those things that it's like a an onion it's got so many layers you peel the layers off and you discover cool things every time you use it so i'm going to wrap it up with that that is a cool tool it's not going to break the bank necessarily and it's going to pay for itself in the long run, which is really what you want. You want to find tools and invest in tools that are going to pay for themselves. And when I say pay for themselves, I mean as in they make you more efficient. They make your life easier and they make you a more efficient technician. Tools that do that make you money. And that's what you want. So give this thing a look. Go look at other videos of it if you want. I'm sold on this thing. I really, really like it because I can do anything I want with it. And it's perfectly fine for the shop I work at now, which we do mostly older cars. Every now and again, something new comes in. And when it does, I have it. I can do a tire rotation for a customer. I can reprogram their sensors, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. And we're done. No big deal, right? So give it a try. Go out and look at it. For the price of what it is, and if you have one of these cars, well worth it well worth it in the long run i think if not then i mean you could get by with something like this for a while but if you want to really step it up to the next level step up your game a little bit then i would try looking at something like this they have other models altel does and i i like them i've had i called customer service once very responsive very helpful i stand by this i endorse this they're not sponsoring me yet mm -hmm -hmm. but i endorse this so go look go check it out go find a tool that makes your life easier and most importantly you guys keep it between the ditches and you come back and see me